y'all y'all and welcome back to my channel and as we've been saying um as the temperature has been going in and out you will hear the subtle or not so subtle depending on how the video decides to go whirring of a fan i've said it once i will say it again it takes a lot of layers to look this good and as such uh, we sweat so for my appearance and for y'all's whateverness, there's good, there's a fan and it's gonna make a noise and if you don't like that, uh, well I guess just goodbye. But for those of you who are all okay with the fan, faint, subtle whirring, obviously it is the end of a new month. We have made it through September. Quite frankly, at around uh, April, May, I didn't think I was going to make it through the whole year. So the fact that we've made it this far is very reassuring. Obviously, I am in my element in September because September is basically, you know, Halloween Eve because Halloween is all of October, even though Halloween is 365 days a year for you, girl. But we have got some hits and misses for you all. We've got some really disappointing misses. Some, like, really bottom-of-the-barrel awful, awful misses. As well as some surprising wonderful hits. We're gonna start off with La Musica. And this month, because it's Halloween Eve, because it's pre-Halloween, we're like getting into the spook zone. I don't have so much songs as I do just albums and artists, which I will leave down below. The first of which being I Am Ghost, which is one of my honestly end-all be-all favorite bands, even though they don't have much of a discography. But they definitely really get me into that spooky, just, they're just, oh, I love them so much. I remember I found their CD at Walmart and I was like, this, this, this album color lo cover looks aesthetically pleasing. And I purchased it and I just lost all my shiznit going up on into that. Their third album, eh, I haven't done anything since then, but the album, uh, Lover's Requiem, which I probably talked about this time last year, is an amazing, wonderful, gothic fantasy. Steven Giuliano, I love his bold vocals, both the hardcore as well as the more symphonic. We've got emotion, we've got classic gothic aesthetic. It's everything I could want in a pre-Halloween album. And then in a very different vein, I have also been listening to a lot of Blackmore's Night and Fawn, which are both medieval pagan folk music. Y'all know that your girl skews very witchy. Um, I do certain sorts of... Um, craft, as we shall say. I be vibing with the spiritual whatevers, and sort of that kind of music really just brings that out, and it's really just this whole witchy, spooky, autonomal equinox changing, shifting. It's just, I just, I'm really drawn to that stuff. So I will leave songs that I've been listening to, as well as whole albums, because I've just been hardcore on that pagan medieval folk, and it just, it just, it, it ignites, like, certain sorts of, like, primal emotional surges within me, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I really, really enjoy it. I sound like I'm describing some kind of, like, trip. But those are some artists that I've just been listening to tremendously through September. Obviously, October, we're going to have probably even more all sorts of gothic whateverness. One last thing that is not um, beauty related. We discussed it in, uh, well, not this, but... I consume the CBD, and as such, I have found a good amount of products that I enjoy and recommend if any of y'all kind of want to see more of my regular day-to-day -day CBD um, consumption. Definitely check out my Snapchat. These I get from uh, my favorite CBD vape shop. These are the Secret Nature Artisan CBD. This is a indica strain, and it is sweet cake. And this, these are joints, so they're, they're rolled whatevers. These give me just a fantastically beautiful, amazingly restful sleep. Like, if I know I have some important shiz the next day, and I need to get to sleep, and I need to sleep 
deeply, I'm gonna pull one of these out and smoke it probably at around 7 p.m. and then I am good to go, tucked in bed, 9.30, asleep by 10. I really, really like this brand. I've tried other strains from them. I've tried Doughboy. I really like Papaya Nights, but Sweet Cake here for sleep absolutely one of the best things it just puts you into this beautiful restful i could just i could just slip off into the world's most amazing sleep right now if i can link these i will uh, link them down below obviously it depends on what your state laws or what your country laws or anything sort of that but i will leave whatever information i can down below now let's talk about something that sucks the Colored Rain Juicy Boost Palette. Y'all would have seen me try to use this in a, you know, a, a, a try-on. We made it through the eyeshadow. We didn't do the rest of the face because there really, there wasn't any reason because it wasn't going to get any better. The colors on this are so pretty and some of the shades are nice. I really like Orange Carrot. I like Ginger Bay. I like turmeric shot. I think mint leaves and cucumber avocado are nice, but everything else is kind of just a crapshoot. For some reason, these are not the pigments that uh, I am used to dealing with from Colored Rain. Typically, several of y'all have said that apparently their shimmers are typically wonderful. Personally, I don't think that is uh, this formula right here because this formula is chunky, schwitzy, it gets everywhere, it's not fun, it makes your eyelids look like you are a million years older plus one. Not fun, did not want to blend, did not want to layer over each other. I had such high high expectations for this considering how much I love the Vivid Pigments palette. I will leave my uh, first impressions and my review of this down below. I believe the review will be up. You know your girl isn't the best at time management and lining things up so whatever's available I will leave down below if I remember even though we all know 9999999% of the time I don't. Trying to get better we'll leave whatever if something isn't up stay tuned for that shiz. But I was just really really disappointed by this palette. It had so much potential but it just did not want to play nice. And your girl for my age and how I do my makeup I do not have the time to deal with a palette that does not want to play nice. And then continuing on with more palettes that don't want to play nice, I don't know what it is. I think 30 has finally come and caught up with me and been like, all right, all the things you used to be able to do normal with your skin and your makeup and your whatever, well, guess what? You ain't going to be able to do that no more and everything's going to start to change. Or at least that's what I feel when I was using these. I know it's not going to be up yet. Y'all can roast me in that video. These were in an anti-haul. They will appear in an anti-hauled it, but bought it. And these are the Huda Beauty Haze palettes. You know, these are her, her nine pan palettes. Y'all know I love the ones I have. Got this beautiful khaki grungy. Mm. Honestly, looking at these color stories makes me even madder. We've got this purpley one right here. We have this sand one, which I will reiterate, if you've got the new nudes palette or any of the nude quads, you don't need this shiz. But I bought it anyway. And y'all would have seen on Snapchat that I tried, I, tr I tried so hard. My mother even asked me, she was like, sometimes you tend to get angry and you tend to just like not, not try anymore. And I said, mother, I love you, but I tried. I literally, I removed my eyeshadow four times and I tried to make this shiz work. And I just couldn't, I had, the funny thing is, I don't have an opinion on the shimmers because I haven't even tried the shimmers because I couldn't get past the mats. I couldn't get past the backbone, the foundation, the of my eyeshadow look. I'd start off with one color. Let's see here. I was going to use, going to use, no, we're going to use this one. This one, I was all excited about this one. I was like, oh boy, F me up. And I started with that one. Now, I don't know if you can see, probably not, but do you see? All the like brush strokes in that shiz. Heck and powdery. I was digging. I was pleading. I was begging these mats to work. You start out with one and you're like, okay, all right, all right, we, we okay. 
And then you go to layer that shiz up and Jesus take the wheel. It was a no-go. It was a no, 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 no. We are not calling in to work. We're gonna piff into absolute obscurity. So I was like, okay, all right. It's this one, you know? All right, these maths. Not, not so well formulated. Let's try this. Uh, second verse, same as the first. You start out with the first color and you're like, okay, all right. I can see where this is going. And it was just the saddest, saddest level of pigmentation. It was just, you just kind of, you get a little bit and you're like, okay, all right, this is going to be great. This is going to be amazing. All right, hold still. Don't panic. And then I would go to blend it out and it would be like, bye-bye. I don't know what it is. I don't know if my 30-year-old eyelids have suddenly hit their expiration date and they're like, that's it. Not accepting color anymore because that has been my recent problem. Although I did try these with an eye primer. Once again, you would have seen that shiz on um, Snapchat. I tried it with a different eye primer than you saw on Snapchat. I tried it with the traditional way that I do my makeup. I tried to make these work. I was going to review them, but I'm not even going to review them. I was like, I will talk about them here. I don't want to review them because they make me angry. And these are going back to the store, which makes me so sick, so, especially this one. So, mm. I know it's just like boring neutrals with kind of a khaki based brown, but for some reason, this color theory right here Fs me up. Crazy powdery, crazy fallout. You're digging into the shade and you just ain't getting payoff, blendability or anything. I don't know what she did to F this formula up, but she did something. All right, let's talk about something positive now. Skincare. This is the Truly Organic Doll Face Face Cream, which I bought in my pre uh, low buy kind of makeup haul where I was like, I'm gonna buy that skincare and that skincare and I'm gonna have all the skincare so I don't have to buy any more skincare on my low buy. Which as much money as I spent during that has actually worked great because I've bought no skincare since my low buy. But this is such a nice, now y'all would have seen it on Snapchat a while ago. I did have this and you open it up and you've got like the all the whatever and I was like, oh, there's a little air bubble and I popped it and like half of the, the, the stuff just went down and I was like, oh. When I'm paying for something, I like it to be completely filled up. But that aside, this is such a nice, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a moisturizer or just a face cream, but whatever it's supposed to be, it gives me such beautifully supple dewy and luminous like it makes my skin look vibrant and healthy it is this beautiful like uh it's i'd say moussey it's definitely not a typical cream and it's definitely not like a gel based one so it's it's very fluffy it's very very moussey i guess yeah moussey like when you take whipped cream and you add it to jello and you like were that shiz up that kind of texture if, if you can bring something to mind. And it's just nice and lightweight. I would not recommend it to someone who has oily or normal to oily because this stuff can really give you like a, a sheen. It definitely makes you not look dry. Like you look very, very, I don't even want to say slick. Like it's, it's, so, it's such a, I, mm, it's just very, nourished and healthy and dewy. You look like you've got nice supple whateverness on your skin. So if you've got trouble controlling your oil, I'm not sure if this one would necessarily be a winner, but for my normal to dry skin, I really like this and I'm excited to try some different things from the brand, although they've, they're also the brand that's like, oh, we're selling like vitamins and things for you to stir into your drink. And I'm like, kind of don't believe in the mythos of that, which is funny because I believe in the mythos of crystals, so I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder. But I really like this, and it's been working really well for me, and if I didn't have other creams and moisturizers and shiz, I would repurchase this. All right, a complexion favorite, which is actually kind of funny because I think I talked about this in a video. I did do my full face of ColourPop. It's the pretty fresh uh, Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. I went online, finally bit the bullet, and bought, um, I'm not sure if it's my correct color. This color was achieved uh, mixing two of them, which is 
typically what I have to do. But now that I have found a way to find a correct color, I've been able to experience this foundation a lot more and I love it. It's so just like natural and healthy looking. It isn't thick, it isn't cakey. If you like a natural, more dewy leaning foundation, kind of light to medium, light to light and a half. I wouldn't say this is a full medium coverage. So definitely airing more on that light side, but if you like that, I really like this shiz. It is affordable, hasn't broken me out, and even though it's got that coconutty in it. So I've been really, really happy that I've able been able to experience this with the right color. It's just been a really nice and healthy and beautiful and dewy, y'all know. The complexion is very important to you, girl. If the complexion ain't popping, we might as well just throw away the whole look. And this just gives such a beautiful, naturally radiant, healthy finish. A wonderful, affordable, dry skin friendly foundation that I can recommend that is cruelty free. If you are a fan, of the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation, the Josie Moran Argan Oil Foundation. I think you will also enjoy this. Might as well get out of the way something else that I did not enjoy, a eye primer. This makes me so sad because y'all know your girl loves Kaleidos Makeup. It is one of my favorite indie makeup brands. And this came out in their uh, Escape Pod collection and I used it once and I'm like, yeah, it's okay, it's an eye primer. I'm not really well versed in eye primers. I don't typically use them. And then in September, I was like, you know what? It's time to change up the game. It's time to get nifty. Let's use eye primers. And I hate this. Now what it does, maybe it's just me. I always preface things with saying maybe I suck at makeup. But I put this shiz on and I dab 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 and I've tried it setting it with a pasty pasty setting shade. I've tried it setting it with a setting powder. I've tried it just on its own straight out the tube and it does this thing where you apply the first color and you're like away. All right, I mean, it does add a lot of texture to my eyelid. I noticed that. And then it, it, it plays really weird with other eyeshadow colors. I used it in my, um, one of my tutorials that may or may not go up. I haven't edited the footage yet, but I put the first color on. I'm like, okay, all right, we going, we vibing, we doing this. And then I went to do the other one and the other color, which I had used before in junction with the color that I used previously, it started removing it, just just taking it away. It kind of reacted like, oh, you, you, you didn't want that first color. You, you want this color now. But yes, I want that color now, but I want it on top of this color, not on its own, which is what the eye primer was desperately trying to give to me by removing the eyeshadow beneath it. It was really, really weird. And it just, I just, uh, it does not make my eyeshadow blending experience, my eyeshadow applying experience any better, and when it makes it worse, it's really bad and it's really weird. Next is actually something that I've changed my mind about. I talked about this as kind of like a, eh, it's okay in a previous hits and misses. This is the Bliss Micro Magic Skin Renewing Microdermabrasion Scrub, which is now available at Target as well as Walmart. I just saw a display there and was really freaking happy because I want to try more from this brand. I got mine from Ulta. A couple of y'all said that this is like a dupe for the uh, Dr. Brandt uh, microdermabrasion. I don't think it's quietly, quietly, quite at that level. I hold that uh, exfoliator in very high esteem, but this is still really freaking nice. It makes my skin like a baby's butt. This is something that you do every, uh, every two to three, two to three times per week. I tend to use it and I like to do three to four days in between this kind of exfoliator. And it's just really 
really good. It works really well around here, which I get dry skin here. I get patches here. I have texture all up in here, and it's really good at just smoothing and refining and diminishing all of those unwanted textury dry whateverness is about my face. It also, I don't know if it's supposed to do this, if this is weird or I'm just losing my mind. It also seems to make my skin really like drink up products. Like this is such a beautiful prep for serums and moisturizer because my skin after I use this and then I apply all my whatevers is just so healthy and radiant and glowy. We are fresh faced. We are glorious. And this is, I believe, like $10. So if you're interested in trying something that's similar to the Dr. Brandt one and you don't want to spend the like, what, $70 price tag, which I understand a lot of people don't. I actually just used up like 1200 points on Sephora for one of them and I'm like, well, it's basically $1,200, but you know, I don't have to spend 80 of my real ones. The Sephora point system just sucks on a hole. But if you're not wanting to do that, I would definitely recommend this. It is a really nice step staple in my skincare routine. I've really enjoyed using it. I'm happy that I can recommend it, but didn't have the $1,200 Dr. Brandt microdermabrasion. I would probably um, uh, pick this up, repurchase this, but because I have other exfoliants that I have right now and I'm not repurchasing things, I'm not. But I like this and I really enjoy it now. All right, there we have that month of hits and misses. And I know I had someone comment on one of my videos it was like please dear god let me help her with her lace it's horrible i'm aware that on several of my wigs my uh lace laying is not the best and that's because i do not glue my wigs to my head because i'm sitting here filming i'm not going anywhere else right now so i have no reason for this lace to be glued to my head and i'm not gonna put excessive wear on my lace expose myself to that and just glue it on my head for shiz and giggles but uh that aside i would love to hear what y'all have to say about the products i talked about as well as some things you've either been loving or hating this month also recommend spooky music to me down below because I'm always down to vibe and listen to some spooky music. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mwah!